On the day of Pentecost, a gift was given to men. And it's pray in tongues. Pray at every opportunity you get in the Spirit. Pray. You can pray for your future. You can pray for your past. It transcends time and space. David, Elijah himself, Isaiah himself, never had the Holy Spirit inside them. You and I, we are clean on the inside by the blood of Jesus. So the Holy Spirit can dwell in us. That shows the gift of tongues is unique for those under grace. And I'm telling you, something happens. You have the quality of prayer that Elijah had when he was on his knees for three hours. He would even push out all the anxiety, stress and worry. Hi, this is Joseph Prince. I want to warmly welcome you to this week's Gospel Partner episode. If you are new here, my team and I would love to connect with you and send you weekly encouragements, pastoral insights, and exclusive content when you sign up for our Gospel Partner newsletter. I will also be sending you this special gift, so please look out for it in your email inbox. I pray that as you listen to today's sermon, you experience a fresh and personal touch from our Lord Jesus. God bless you. We are excited to share with you an update about Gospel Partner. How many of you, you are a Gospel Partner? Make some noise, yeah? Woo! You know, some of you probably remember last year, Pastor Prince shared, the start of last year, he shared what the Lord has put on his heart to see the Gospel of Grace go out further, louder, and faster than ever before by making his latest sermons freely available. So church, we have an exciting video update to share with you on all the wonderful things the Lord is doing through the Gospel Partner Publishing Mission. So please, sit back and enjoy this video and be so blessed. Thank you. So here's the story behind Gospel Partner. The brief? To reach as many people as possible, from all around the globe with the gospel of grace to see the preaching of the gospel go out stronger, louder, faster than ever before. So somewhere in the middle of uh, 2021, um, I couldn't sleep and I asked the Lord, and this was the words the Lord placed in my heart, that the gospel should go faster, louder, and stronger. And I felt like the Lord is saying, have no wall. And I saw the walls all being, being broken down. Are you willing to? I said, yes. The mission? To make every new sermon available for free on YouTube. To give away as many books and resources to people who are in need. Pretty awesome, don't you think? So we asked ourselves, how do we let more people in on this? Who would have thought that the answer to this would come from a letter written over 2,000 years ago? The Apostle Paul, back in the day, in his letter to the Philippians, wrote, Every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God, for you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ. So we put out the call, and so many responded. Through a Gospel Partner subscription, it allowed like-minded people impacted by grace to have a part in this publishing mission, to come alongside Pastor Prince preaching the Gospel and amplify it out to the world. A Gospel Partner subscription is truly like no other. Apart from access to over 1,000 sermons, it also supports the work we do behind the scenes to develop new resources, print books, and translate the Gospel. It helps us build great experiences for people to receive the Gospel for free. Because free doesn't always equal cheap. Now, tell me, what other subscription service out there helps advance the gospel like that. It's not just about entertainment or more movies. It's about touching lives, loving people, and giving them the answer they've been searching for. Jesus, the name above every other name. And that's why to us, a Gospel Partner subscription is truly like no other sub. 
the best partner subscription to me in my daily break. Well, I'm glad to be a part of the Gospel Partnership because I get to hear the messages all day long, 24-7, 365. And they have blessed me beyond measure. The application has truly become my portable sanctuary. It has nurtured my faith, especially when I need it the most. A lot of times I listen maybe in the middle of the night if I can't sleep or first thing in the morning before I get out of bed. We play it in our children's rooms while they sleep. I listen on my ear pods when walking my dogs in the park. And whenever I'm on the train or commute to work, I can listen to the sermon and hear God's words every day. Kind of hard to pick just one way that it's a blessing because it's like one of those gifts that is a gift inside of a gift inside of a gift. Last year I was diagnosed with breast cancer, and I was diagnosed almost one year to the date that we lost my sister to cancer, even on days where I was in the bed, could not move, in pain, just able to be encouraged and still know that while I was going through that the Lord absolutely was with me. That was one of the ways that I stood on the Word of God fighting cancer. It was by using the Gospel Partner subscription. My little boy was born, and we found out at around three that he was diagnosed with autism. He couldn't even talk to us, my husband or I, but he was able to quote uh, Pastor Prince's messages. And his first verse was, I think, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I had been smoking for over 10 years. It became a part of my lifestyle where I would smoke just to eat today. I'm able to eat without smoking. So I thank him for using this gospel partner subscription that counteract the lies that the enemy tried to put in. So I am thankful <laughs> for this. In Daniel 11:32, it says, the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits and exploit the enemy we did. To date, we've put out over 50 free gospel partner episodes on YouTube chalking up over 2 million views monthly, reaching over 500,000 precious people from over 150 countries. And that's not views for views' sake, but people who are hurting behind closed doors, people hungry for the truth, but with no means to get it. Every day our Gospel Partner episodes, like Digital Missionaries, are reaching deeper into hard-to-reach places who would have thought we would be touching lives in Ukraine, Vanuatu, Guatemala, Mozambique, Haiti, Madagascar, Mongolia, and we are still not done. Together with New Creation TV and its partners, each Gospel Partner episode is then translated into 13 other languages, all with a singular purpose, to unchain the good news and to make him known to every tribe and in every tongue. Maybe you've heard about the great revivals in times past, the Reformation, the great awakening of the 1700s, the Jesus movement among the hippies. Maybe you've wondered what it would be like to live in a time of revival, to experience God's miracles, to see droves of people come to know the Lord. Well, what if we are in the midst of one right now? The best of all, the lives that have been impacted. These people are wanting the gospel to go out. They're, actually, the people themselves are sponsoring the gospel to other people. They are, they are getting like books like Destined to Rain and putting it in the hands of all these people. In the last two years since we launched, Gospel Partner, as a publishing house, has given away over 6,000 copies of Destined to Rain, 4,000 copies of Healing Scriptures, 5,000 copies of Hope That Never Fails, and the list goes on. So I just want to thank everyone that has become a gospel partner here in this church, as well as all over the world. You are truly, truly my hands, reaching out, extended hands. And you are reaching out to all the four corners of the earth, and the gospel will be preached. To sum up the story of Gospel Partner thus far, it seems like we've done a lot, and we have. But there remains still much land to be possessed. So, pray with us for this ongoing journey. Pray for our pastor and pray for our team. Pray for fresh ideas to take this beautiful mission further than ever before. Until, as it says in Habakkuk 2.14, 
The whole earth is filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Thank you, Gospel Partners, for joining us in this global publishing mission. Praise God. There is a gospel, a grace revolution going on all over the world. And it's the only hope for mankind. Amen? You know, we see the world, we look at the world, and like what we shared last week, we see all kinds of lawlessness. We see all kinds of confusion. We see people suffering from mental depression and mental illness like we have never seen. You know, with all the modern technology that is supposed to make our lives more convenient, so we are supposed to be more healthy, stronger, amen, even in our character, more at peace, more calm, more collected. Instead, people are fighting, striving, resenting, hating, depressed, Oppress. And friend, when we look at all these problems, we think to ourselves, you know, the problem is that they have not obeyed God. They are not moral. That's not the thing. You know, if obedience would solve anything, the Jewish people had the law for 1,500 years, yet Jesus came. So morality is not the answer. Amen. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the answer. Amen. Amen. The gospel of Jesus Christ. When you talk about the gospel, some of you say, Apostle, what, what is the gospel? Well, Paul talks about the gospel this way. He calls it the gospel of grace and peace. So when we say grace, you say, Pastor Prince, and we notice that your ministry and people in your church emphasize grace a lot. Why? Because grace is the gospel. The gospel is the grace of God. Amen. Amen. The Apostle Paul says, I testify of the gospel of the grace of God. If you look at the preaching in the early church, it's all about Jesus and His finished work. You talk about repentance. We all agree. Amen. Repentance is a fundamental part of preaching the gospel, but not the way you know, that most people try to bring it across. Like, unless you turn around from your sin, then believe on Jesus, then you'll be safe. No, you have put it the other way around. You have reversed the entire thing. It's no more the good news because if people have the power to turn around, they won't need Jesus. They have the power within themselves to turn around. So the repentance God talks about is repentance towards God. I'll give you an example. For example, when in Acts 10, when Peter was called to go, right, an angel appeared to him, remember? To go to the house of a man called Cornelius. He was an Italian centurion. And the man obviously was a man who was given to morality. He did a lot of good works. In fact, the Bible says uh, before Peter went down to his house, Cornelius himself had a vision where an angel appeared to him and said, your alms, almsgiving is like your charity. All your charity work and your good works, your prayers, even reaching, trying to pray to God and reach, reach heaven, even the attempt is all held as a memorial before God. Notice, he, didn't, he did not say that you are part of God's people. All these things make you a son of God. All these things have saved you. No. The angel still had to tell Cornelius, send some man to a certain house, there is an apostle there by the name of Peter. Bring him over and listen. He will tell you words by which you'll be saved and your house. So when, when Peter came, right? Peter said, uh, well, you know, <laughs> Peter was a funny guy. He says, you, you know that I'm not supposed to fellowship with you all, right? Because Jews and Gentiles don't fellowship in those days. Amen? But he says that, uh, but God has taught me that I must not be a respecter of persons. So, here goes. He talked about Jesus, but it was, it was just narrating, introducing them to the person of Jesus, but it was at the point, at the end of his sermon, the culmination, I wouldn't say end of his sermon, because 
Peter would have gone on. Peter came to this point. He says, to him, all the prophets give witness to him, to Christ. All the prophets give witness that anyone believing in him will receive forgiveness of sins. And the Bible says when he said these words, listen, when he said these words, repentance wasn't mentioned. There was no verbal repentance on the people's part. There was no action repentance on the people's part. I repeat, when Peter preached and he came to this point, to him all the prophets give witness that everyone who believes in Jesus will receive forgiveness of sins. The next verse says, while Peter spoke these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all of them and they began to speak with other tongues. That was the end of the message for Peter. End of the message. He cannot go on, Ray. Now, many days after that, the church in Jerusalem heard about it because it's the first time the Gentiles got saved. Now, this is the preaching of the gospel. Did you hear the preaching of the gospel? Didn't put conditions before the people, but instead giving, showing the people the freeness of the gospel to be received. Now, free doesn't mean cheap. It cost God His Son. God so loved the world that God sacrificed His own Son to take the place of you and I, the sinner, on that cross. So He bore the judgment of all our sins because He was bearing our sins in His own body on the tree. So the judgment fell on Him. And once the judgment falls on Him, it cannot fall on us. It will be unjust. Just like in the Old Testament, it will be unjust for God to allow someone to kill somebody and then let him go scot-free. His sin must be punished or else God is unjust. Today, it will be unjust for God to punish you when you put your trust in Christ who suffered for your sins and paid it all. Amen. So God, God did it in such a way that his, even His righteousness, His, his just, justice aspect of His person, as well as His love, they are all satisfied. They are all glorified. God did not compromise His justice to show us love. The cross actually is both justice and love kiss. Judiciously. And God in all His attributes, in all the attributes, whether it's justice, whether it's righteousness, whether it is holiness, whether it's love, whether it's mercy, whether it's grace, is all glorified at the cross. Amen. If you think about it, think about it. The cross is a wonderful meditation of how Jesus, by His death, He glorified the Father. And that's why the cross is more than just the forgiveness of our sins. The cross is Jesus glorifying the Father in that act. Meeting fully all His attributes, glorifying His attributes. God did not say, you're my son. You're not supposed to be there. There'll be a compromise of one of his attributes. Right? No, God gave his son because he was there as us. So that today, he's at the Father's right hand. He is there as us. Can I have a good amen? amen? So after Peter preached that message, a few days after that, he was called to the carpet because the, the, the Jewish leaders who are believers now, James was the, like the senior pastor of that church in Jerusalem. He was called on the carpet. And they said that we understand you went to the Gentiles. Oh, yes. And we understand you, you, you preach to them. He says, yes. And what can I do? He says, he says that God gave them, listen carefully, God purified their hearts by faith. Now, while this was going on, someone said of this entire thing, the apostles, they were there, they were gathered there, right? You know what they said? Then God has given the Gentiles repentance unto life. That's the word they use. They use the word repentance. But when you look at the event itself, there was no repentance. The way we know it. The way, you know, we think of it religiously. But the entire act was repentance. Because the apostles themselves say, then God has given the Gentiles repentance unto life. So sometimes you use the word repentance, sometimes you don't use the, the word repentance. It means you change your mind, change your belief, because that's where it all begins. So the world out there, we look for character, we look for, for 
goodness from man. We look for all that kind of thing. But God is saying, man has all sin. You know, it's like at the core of it, sin is there. And how do you destroy the sin that is in the man that you love without destroying the man? So the cross is the answer. There's no other answer. If you, you give a set of, of good works to do, or this morality and that morality, even the Ten Commandments, it cannot save man. Amen. Amen. So all that Jesus did on the cross, His death, His burial, His resurrection, is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. So the apostles went around preaching the gospel. Then we have another instant, instance in um, Acts 13, where Paul went to preach in a church. Today is in Turkey. I was there. I was there with Pastor Mark. Can you believe it? Amen. With Pastor Mark, never a dull moment. <laughs> we were there with our families, you know, uh, on holiday in Turkey a number of years ago. This is quite a number of years ago. So we went to this place, Antioch, Pisidia. Pisidia, Antioch. And um, it is not the Antioch. There are two Antiochs. There, you know, the other Antioch where where Christians are first called Christians, that's in Syria today, okay? But this Antioch is in Turkey, Asia Minor, in Turkey. And uh, we were there, and we were at the location of the synagogue where Paul preached. Well, you know, when Paul preached at the synagogue, this is what he said. He told them all, and most of them are Jews, but there were some Gentiles, converts, proselytes. And he, he preached the entire, almost the entire Bible, the Old Testament, and then he came to Jesus. And I love this. He said this, And by Him, all who believe, how many? All. You are included. By Him, all who believe are what? Justified. From all things by which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Think of that. And not only that, we receive forgiveness of sins. First of all, he said, I'm going to say the whole thing now, okay? So here he has the part of righteousness that Peter didn't talk about, but this is the gospel in his, in his fullness. If you talk about, I wish I have a, uh, a cassette tape. We don't use cassette tapes now, all right? CD, CD is also getting, <laughs> it's completely out, obsolete. Really. So we find MP3 and all that. Whatever it is you want to listen to, if you have a message by the Apostle Paul, and you say, Paul, will the real gospel please stand up? Because nowadays when I go to YouTube, it's so confusing. There's this Lordship salvation. People say that unless he's Lord of all, he is not Lord at all, finish. I'm not too sure he's Lord of all. Because for sure, when you're watching Netflix, at that moment, he's not Lord <laughs> of your viewing. All right? Because some of the things you view on Netflix, at that moment, he's not Lord in your life. There are a lot of things. You don't talk about it. He's not Lord of your life. If you want to make Him Lord, we are in the process of allowing Him to enter those areas that we are not even cognizant of. Am I right? But at the moment of believing Him, all right, we just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. And to say that unless He is Lord of all, He's not Lord at all, means at any point you die, amen, and He's not Lord of all your life, you're still lost. That's not the gospel. It's one of the things that's very rampant. It's unfortunate when people are hungry, they go to YouTube or social media. A lot of this is out there. Lordship salvation. Yes, you're saved by grace, but it's imperative on you. You continue your salvation. No, friend. The Bible used the word, therefore being justified by faith. We have peace with God. Amen. We have peace with God. The Bible says He has delivered us from the wrath to come. Amen. This is not, you know, I, I save you and you're under probation, okay? <laughs> I watch your performance. No, God is not your boss. Amen. It's not the way the man, man does it. Once He saves us, He saves us eternally. Amen. Can I have a good amen? amen? So, Paul said, Paul preached these words, therefore through this man is preached to you the forgiveness of sins. Free, unqualified, uncondition unconditional proclamation. Have you noticed that? 
Therefore, by this man is preached to you the forgiveness of sins. Nothing on your part. It's a proclamation to you. Law demands for, for you to do something. Amen. Grace gives. It's a free proclamation for everyone to believe on. And those who believe, the Bible calls that faith. And then they appropriate what has already been done. Paul says, Therefore, through this man is preached to you the forgiveness of sins, and by him all are justified who could not be justified by the law of Moses, which includes the Ten Commandments. Are you with me so far? Now think about it. That is a written form. We have, thank God, we have the entire sermon of Paul from beginning to end. So that's your MP3. Just read out loud. Record it. It's as good as listening to Paul. That's the real gospel. Now today, I think some people will come to Paul and say, Paul, Paul, uh, hey, you don't know them, you know? You don't know what kind of background, you know? You can't just say, through this man is preached you the forgiveness of sins. You must tell them, you must put this aside, you must give that up, you must stop that. You, must, you can't just say, wow, just like unqualified proclamation. To this man is preached to you the forgiveness of sins. You must qualify your statement. And what do you mean by, by him all are justified from which you cannot be justified by the law of Moses? How can you say that? In fact, exactly what happened. The Jews were not happy in the synagogue. Many of them were not happy with Paul. The Bible says the Gentiles heard him gladly and begged that the same word should be preached the next Sabbath. Are you listening? So, my desire is to see this gospel spread all over the world. Amen. Now, it all depends on the generation you're in. One generation, they will try to use stadiums, big stadiums, right? To invite the people in all the way from D.L. Moody and all that until uh, Billy Graham. But times are changing. The gospel doesn't. The method of delivery doesn't. Just like the times of uh, Martin Luther. You know, um, there's a man called John Huss. John Huss actually is the, technically the father of Reformation because he was the one that, that uh, uncovered the truth of righteousness by faith, not by works, through Christ. But be, during his time, something happened between his time and 50 plus years later was Martin Luther. Martin Luther is given the credit and rightly so, of being the one that started the Reformation. Reformation means when the church at that time, they thought they would be saved by, by, by giving money or doing penance or, 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 or uh, you know, giving this up and observing this, observing that. Nothing to do with all that. You are saved by grace through faith. Now those things are the result of life. I like what Martin Luther says one time. An apple tree produces apples. Apples don't produce apple tree. <laughs> apples make not an apple tree, he says. Apples, trees produce apples. You know what it means? If you, you are born again, amen, God put His Spirit in you. You are now one in Christ, with Christ. You are an apple tree. You will produce good fruits, apples. The apples, the good, doing the good works don't make you. You make the fruit. Yeah, so it's very deep, huh? Very deep. <laughs> you all go back, you'll pray about it, all right? Apple, this apple tree business is very deep. All right, for Singaporeans, maybe durian tree. <laughs> Good durians. Mawang and uh, D20, what? Ma, yeah, whatever it is. The best is the black what? Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Durians don't produce durian tree. All right? Durian tree produce durians. Right? You say, Pastor, you put the seed in the ground, the, the durian produce a tree. No, no, no. Long before the seed was there, where did the seed come from? A durian tree. So somewhere along, along the way, you got to go back to the tree. Amen. Like your son say, you know, actually, I, I produce myself. Yeah, boy, I produce you. <laughs> With cooperation from your mom. 
you better honor her as well. Right? It's as simple as that. Amen? So Martin Luther, the reason why was because John Haas, by the way, was burned at the stake by the religious people that believe that he's making it too simple for people. And to today, the generation is still around, I'm telling you. They'll say, you're making it too simple for people. We didn't make it simple. And simple doesn't mean cheap. God made it for us. The freeness of it. Give God the glory. Amen? Amen. But John Haas was burned at the stake. But more than 50 years after that was Martin Luther. What's the difference? Martin, something happened in between John Haas and Martin Luther. It was the printing of the press. Printing of the printing press. Now, that never existed before. And you know what Martin Luther did? He started printing his 95 Thesis. He printed more than they can burn it. His opponents burn as many of his 95 Thesis, but he, he prints too fast, too much, that it spread. The Reformation spread. That was their social media in those days. So you go back to that time, before the Gutenberg press was done, people had to really go by word of mouth. So who do you think gave the idea to Mr. Gutenberg? He was, by the way, a religious man. It's God. And, it, and the, first, the first book that the Gutenberg press released or printed was the Bible. So all the books we have today, we owe it to that printing press. Amen. So today we need to use the wisdom of God. Amen. Though we are, we are geared to the, we must be geared to the times, but anchored to the rock. That never changes. We are anchored to Jesus Christ, but we need to be geared to the times. Are you listening? Uh, that's all I want to say. God bless you. That's the gospel, people. That's what we are doing. Amen. So all you got to do, I endeavor that everyone who latches on, on my sermon, on any other topic, whatever I do, in between, they'll find the gospel. That's why I always preach the gospel. Here and there, I'll bring in the gospel. And the gospel is also a revelation of righteousness. By Him, all who believe are justified, being made right with God. It's like, it's like the court of heaven, look at you, and the devil says, this person has sinned. She has sinned. That person has sinned. God says, acquitted. And the devil says, huh? <laughs> Why? Because someone has gone into his punishment place and has already been executed for that sin. Not only that, because he in and of himself, he did not sin, but he went there as your substitute. Guess what? Jesus was never more pleasing to the Father than when He was on that cross. Yes, as God who is holy, tries holy, He turned His back. And Jesus cried, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You all know, right? It's the first time He ever addressed His Father as my God. When He cried, it is finished. He looked up again. Now He says, Father, paid for. After it's finished, He calls His Father again, Father. As father, he turned around. The, he was never more pleasing than when he was on the cross. Because he says in another place, his father always loved him. He was daily his delight even before we were created, before the, even before the earth was created. In the book of Proverbs, I was daily his delight. You see, we, we love our son. We say, wow, God is like us. No, no. God made you so you understand his father's love. There's a son family relationship. We are the result of what already eternally existed. Love within the thing. So what's the problem here, Pastor Prince? The world is crazy. You know, if, if, if I'm God, I won't make the world like that. If you are God, we are all finished. <laughs> Let me tell you this. God didn't make the world like this. 
God did, God did make the world that you must go for a blood test, that you have to go and uh, 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 look at your age and how old you are and, and uh, you know, be expecting certain things to happen. God didn't make you to even die. It's not His plan. You know, the Bible says death is an enemy. In more than one place in the Bible, it says death is an enemy to God. God never meant for you to die, not even grow old not have any sickness and disease. Then what happened, Pastor Prince? Man disobeyed God. God says, look, I'm going to give you a free choice. It is a danger. God cannot use His power. He's about to do wrong. Amen? Uh, that's an AI. <laughs> AI obeys the Creator. AI cannot initiate. You know that? They talk about self-driving cars. Now the problem they have is this. There's an old man in one corner of the street, all right? And uh, a group of children on the other side. And you have lost control of the car. AI takes over. And there's an oncoming lorry. On one side, an elderly man. On one side, a group of children. Which way do you turn? AI? My advice, drive your car for a while, okay? <laughs> All right? There's an intelligence that's beyond AI that God has given you. Amen? AI serves you. You don't serve AI. All right? Okay. Amen. Anything to do with robots is unbending, unyielding in its exactitude. But what to do with man is a spontaneity that's life. It can flow, all right? And when they encounter a new problem, they have to program in again, okay? For us, let's hope your programming every time you come on Sunday is good. Amen? Amen? But yes, life, life is, you cannot predict life. Life is spontaneous. So man sinned against God. God gave man the choice. Now God cannot say, oh, okay, forget about it. There's a consequence. You know, you cannot say, uh, I choose to put my finger in fire. Yeah, you, but you cannot choose no burn. You can choose where to put your finger, but you cannot choose no burn. Finger in fire equals burn. God already told man, if you sin, you'll die. You'll die inside first, cut off from me, this real man, spirit man, and then gradually your outward man will die. So that's what happened, okay? Are you with me so far? All right, so the gospel is not preaching the law. It is preaching Christ, the finished work. The law is good, but it cannot make you good. The law is holy. No one can be holy through the law. So we are no more on Mount Sinai when God gave to Israel the Ten Commandments. And Israel is the only one that God gave the Ten Commandments. The rest of us, the Bible says, every man has in his conscience the work of the law written in their conscience. But Israel was given the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai, okay? Say Mount Sinai. Yeah, this is uh, Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia today, okay? Mount Sinai, not, not, not uh, the hospital, okay? So when God gave the Ten Commandments, what happened to the men down there? They all died, okay? Got it? And the Jewish people tell us that is the feast of Pentecost. Pentecost means 50, like you say Pentecostal, the 50th day. It's the fifth day. Amen. The 50th day from Passover, Pentecost. God gave the law and uh, 3,000 people died. Fast forward to the new covenant in the upper room. The disciples were gathered, the 11 apostles, and uh, they had to choose someone to replace uh, Judas. And then they were all in the upper room. And the Bible says uh, this upper room is at Mount Zion. Okay? Say Mount Zion. It's at Mount Zion. And on the day of Pentecost, and it's so telling because Acts 2 says in verse 1, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, God waited because the law was given on the first feast of Pentecost. Under grace, God waited until the day of Pentecost came, which they celebrated. And they were all gathered together. It was very crowded in Jerusalem because a lot of people came to celebrate Pentecost. This time God gave what? The Spirit, not the law. 
And Paul, uh, Peter went out and preached and 3,000 people got saved. So when the law was given, 3,000 people died. When grace was given, when the Spirit was given, 3,000 people were saved. So God said to me a long time ago, move your pulpit from Mount Sinai to Mount Zion. Amen. Amen. Start preaching from the mercy seat, not from the judgment seat. Amen. And something else happened on the day of Pentecost when God poured out His Spirit that the church world has been still reticent to acknowledge or to accept. All of them, all 120 of them in the upper room, they were gathered there. And Mary was there as well, mother of Jesus. They were all gathered there. And the Holy Spirit came and they all began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance, the Bible says. Now notice, they spoke, not the Holy Spirit. A lot of people, when they ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, their mouth is closed. God never forces you. God never makes you. You understand? All right? Law demands, grace supplies. So the supply is there. The flow is there. You open your mouth and let the flow out. It may be words unintelligible to you, and most of them are. <laughs> All right? You won't know what you're saying, but that's the beauty of it. Because for so long, your mind has been bullying you. Your mind has risen you into depression. Into a place where mentally you feel like you're losing it. Your mind, the way you're lodging, you know, making everything out to be your mind. Unless I can understand, I will not believe. Although there are many things you don't understand, yet you believe. Again, when you watch your Netflix, you don't understand how that little box, now it's no more a box, now just a tiny layer, slim, line and how everything can be projected into this image and uh, you don't know how, how it all works. Come on, don't pretend. You, you do not know how it all works. Maybe there are a few of you, but even then you don't know how to explain the, the, the electrons or whatever, uh, where it comes from, who created it, right? To come to your house, right? For you to watch. Doesn't stop you from watching, from enjoying. For people to say that, you know, I must know everything, then I trust, then I believe. It's nonsense. They just don't want to believe. Amen? You board a plane, the guy says, ladies and gentlemen, this is your pilot. Right? Lim Peng Sun. And we are flying at an altitude of 45,000. For all you know, the real, the real pilot Peng Sun already. <laughs> Sit back, Relax. Do you go down there and knock on it? Can I ask for your credentials? You got a funny name. I'm scared you're Ping San. <laughs> Ping San means faint. Right? You don't. You trust the man that you've never seen. But when you come to God, oh my goodness, I need to have this first. I need to have that first. You must show me this. I must show you. No, it's the heart. It's the heart. The problem is the heart. Okay? Amen? Okay. Amen, Amen Pastor Prince. Preach it. Okay. Thank you. God bless you. Good boy. Okay, so we are in a grace revolution and the devil is afraid. That's why, you know, all the symptoms of the world, all the darkness in the world, don't be afraid of it. Where sin increases, grace superabounds. We have to believe it. Now they are ripe for the answer. We, you know, when you keep on doing sin, all kind of perverted sins, all kind of sin, the more you do it, the Bible talks about a cup of iniquity being full. The more you do it, the less fun you have in it. The less pleasure you have in it. The more you do it, the more empty you feel. The more you do it, the more you want it, the more you cannot satisfy yourself. They come to a place of satiation and become jaded. Even football players can be jaded. They can play so much until they, they lost their skill. So you know what a good manager will do? Give him a sabbatical. When they come back, they come back with a vengeance. Mm. I pray that you will hear what the Spirit wants you to hear. 
You think that God doesn't know that sin destroys, sin will never bring happiness? God knew it all at all. We, we, we didn't know. The devil makes it appear like God is holding back on you. But the devil hates you, man. You are made in God's image. He can't get at God directly. He comes after you. Because you are His prized creation, the greatest creation. You are made in His image. Amen? Introducing the new Joseph Prince app. We've designed the new app with one thought in mind to make connecting with the Lord daily simple and easy for you. Through the guided daily experience, spend time in His presence and build a habit of starting your day right with the Word of God. Let's pray this short prayer together. Heavenly Father, Thank you for your deep love and detailed care for me. I'm grateful that you value me so much and that you know even before I ask what I really need. Help me to remember that no problem or need is too small for you to handle. I bring all my cares to you knowing that you are attentive to every little detail of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, everyone is looking to amuse themselves. They are engaged in social media because there's a constant craving to be amused. Musing is opposite from amusement. Muse means you are silently contemplating, meditating, so shut down everything else that will distract you. Spend time, bring up that Word of Scripture, meditate on it, and the Word of God will release health, life, prosperity into your life. Thanks to the support of our Gospel partners, the daily experience is now free for everyone. Try it now on the brand new Joseph Prince app. Download the new app today. So on the day of Pentecost, a gift was given to man. And it's praying in tongues. Think about it. So what was the law? It's now the Spirit. And how is it manifested? By them praying in tongues. All of them pray in tongues, including Mary. I mean, are you listening, people? So here, okay, let's go right to the Word. Actually, I've been teaching you the Word throughout the whole thing, right? <laughs> Ephesians 6, look at the end of Ephesians 6. That's where we left. Because the rest of it, the, the pieces of the armor is all that you have received. Remember that? Amen? You have having, having put on, having girded your loin with truth, having on the brass plate off, having on, past tense, it's, it's already done. The brass plate of righteousness. You are righteous by faith. Put it, put it on your chest. Amen. Because that's where the devil attacks your heart. Diabolos in Greek means an accuser. Literally, it's a court term. A prosecutor. He finds faults with you. So make sure you have the breastplate of righteousness on. This is not your righteousness. If your righteousness is it's your righteousness, the devil put, put holes in your, in your breastplate. It is his righteousness that you are wearing. Are you listening or not? You feel accused? Confess under your breath, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. And believe it. And that's what God looks at. Okay? So then, it says, uh, having your feet shot with the preparation that comes from the gospel of peace, always ready. A soldier must always be ready. Never be caught by surprise. Amen? And then uh, above all, taking up the shield of faith. Actually, having taken up the shield of faith, by which you quench all the fiery dust of the wicked. The only thing you receive is this. And take, the word take in the Greek is actually receive. Receive the helmet of salvation, which is hope of salvation, and the sword, the most offensive weapon. The only offensive weapon of the entire. The rest are all defensive. This is offensive. Right? And take up the sword of spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Now, like I said last week, um, we, we look at the word praying always and we think that that's how it starts off. Right? In the Greek. But in the Greek, 
the word dia comes first. And the word dia, D-I-A, uh, it, it, I just said D-I-A, but that's not how they, they write it, of course. Dia means by means of, in true. And, and the, 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 the one who actually, in its in uh, translation of the Bible, that you got it, is uh, Young's. Young's put it like this, true, all prayer. True or by means of, all prayer. So how do you receive the helmet of salvation? How do you receive the sword of the Spirit? Shoom. Like, you know, you, you watch uh, uh, the Pilgrim's Progress. You, re you receive the sword, right? Christian received the sword. Supernaturally, it was given to him, right? How? Praying in the Spirit. By means of praying, all prayer and supplication, praying at all times in the Spirit. Now, I want to settle this uh, very quickly first. Praying in the Spirit. You say, why is that tongues, Pastor? It has to be tongues because uh, I'm going to quote you right now real fast. Okay, from, you can do your own study. In 1 Corinthians 14, it says, Wherefore, if I pray in an unknown tongue, Paul says, My spirit prays. Which part of you prays? Your spirit. Okay, got it? My spirit prays. Now, then later on he says, watch this, I will, what then? I will sing with the, I will sing with the spirit, I'll pray with the spirit, and I'll pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit, and I'll sing with the understanding. So those that say that praying the Spirit is praying with the impetus of the Holy Spirit. All right, sounds good. It is with the impetus of the Holy Spirit that you speak in tongues. But how do you explain this? I'll pray with the Spirit. That means I pray with the impetus of the Spirit. Then I pray with the understanding also. No impetus. Understanding is your known language, your mother tongue. So Paul is saying, I do both. I'll sing with the Spirit. What's that? Praying, singing in tongues. And I'll sing with the understanding also. So if you say, if you say that praying the Spirit is just with more impetus, all right, more unction, then this one no unction. Eh? You're going to be consistent. No, it's very clear. Bible, explain Bible. If I pray in an own tongue, my spirit prays. You know, your spirit, people, is that part of you oh, where the Holy Spirit dwells. I'm telling you, that is your, the Holy of Holies. Because no, you're not, you are the temple of God. Your body is the temple of God. You know, we, we liken it to the tabernacle of Moses, right? You know, it talks about the outer court. We say the outer court is our body. Actually, it's not. You look carefully at the word, um, know you not, your bodies are the temple. The word temple there is actually the holy of holies, the holy places and the holy of holies. Your body is the temple, the inner sanctum, the holy place and the holy of holies. So that's where we look at. You understand? And that's why many years ago, God gave me this uh, uh, insight by the grace of God. You know, you, when you pray in tongues, you can also have an interpretation. Sometimes you interpret, but sometimes the interpretation comes as you go to work on your way and all of a sudden, I see it! I see it! Whoa! It's as clear as day. Amen? You tell your friend, do you see it? See what? I see it. Do you see it? I see what? I, I know, I, I see it. I know what to do now. I see it. How, how could I have been so blind? I see the answer, the wisdom of God pops. How? Actually, you're praying the Spirit. And this was the interpretation. Ah, oh, I feel like teaching you on, we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. I feel like teaching you about how he that prays in tongues, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. I feel like teaching you we speak the wisdom of God among the mature. I feel like teaching you, amen, natural men receive not the things of God for they are spiritually discerned. But the Holy Spirit, not in words which man's wisdom teach. What are words which man's wisdom teach? Your mother tongue. Your, your English for us. Right? Not in words which man's wisdom teacheth, but not in words but in words that the Holy Spirit teaches. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. There's a wisdom that the world doesn't know about. It's like the book of Proverbs says, there is wisdom, there is counsel for your work, for your parenting, for your family life, for the challenge you're going through, for the physical infirmity or whatever. There's a wisdom there that you don't get from YouTube. That you don't get from experts. 
because experts are limited. Thank God for them. Thank God for all the sacrifices they put in. But it's limited. He is unlimited. He's omniscient. All-knowing. He knows exactly what is the problem. You may have the same mental problem as somebody else, but your situation, the answer is different. You may have the same physical problem as someone else, but your, in your case, it's not the same. One can be caused by drinking, one can be caused by smoking, one can be caused by stress, one can be caused, caused by genetics. The Holy Spirit knows how to make the right prayer even for that condition. Amen. And that's called praying in tongues. I mean, are you with me so far? It's very interesting. Uh, don't do it now, okay? I warn you first. If I see you looking down, okay? Okay, don't look it up. But if you look at YouTube, you Google uh, a neuroscientist or a scientific look. It involves a neuroscientist. A scientific look at speaking in tongues. Even a leading newspaper in, in America, they pick it up on this study by the University of Pennsylvania. A doctor called Dr. Newberg. They got some, some Christians together who are spirit-filled, who are praying in the spirit. They put electrodes on them. And he himself is not a Christian, just let you know. And he says that, I, we cannot understand this. The frontal lobe, right, usually is active when someone is meditating or praying in their own language. But in this case, it is not activated. It seems like the prayer is coming from a region in the brain we know not where. The devil hates tongues. He cannot decipher it. He cannot break the code. He doesn't understand what you're saying. So anytime there's a great controversy against a teaching, ask yourself why. Justification by faith, which is the gospel, is attacked until today, it's still attacked. Why? The devil is afraid. Martin Luther's name is hated and despised. Such a vitriolic against Martin Luther until today, the man is dead. Oh, he's in heaven. But they still hate him. Why? Because of justification by faith. The devil hates it. In our times, what is it? What's the kind of attack? Grace. Grace. Religious spirits, are, they cannot, you know, and these religious spirits will promote as much as possible the law. Like I said, the law, God gave the law as a supplement, as an addendum. Read carefully. The law came in, Paul says. How? Came in what? That same word is used like some spies came in by stealth to spy out our liberty. Same word. That means it's not the main agenda. It came alongside addendum. It's temporal. To show man that man cannot. But what is meant to show man that he cannot, man is using to justify himself by. So, well, Pastor Prince, you're saying, we're not under law, you're lawless lah. No, see, the wonderful thing is that when you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit inside you. And we walk as Christ walk. There is, a, there is a moral excellence that goes beyond the law. The law says, thou shalt not steal. Under grace, you give. What steal? You give, man. Under law, it says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Under grace, Secretly, many times, you have wonderful thoughts and beautiful thoughts about your wife. You think, oh my goodness, it's great. She, she don't even know it. I'm thinking these thoughts about her. Grace will give you that. Are you with me so far? Hmm. I'm not going to pause for all because don't forget, huh? you're thinking people, right? You're going, hallelujah, you're, you're thinking people. Remember that. So, he gives us a language that we don't understand because we cannot wire trap ourselves. We, because if we pray, like for example, you pray for your son, and it transcends time and space. It transcends time and space. Why? You can pray for your future. You can pray for your past, where the trauma set in and caused this fear that you have today, that even psychiatrists will have to probe and probe and probe and you got to pay a lot of money to find, and sometimes it's not even accurate. It's not the problem, it's another problem, but the Holy Spirit knows how to go back into your past, amen, and deal with it, or go to your future. Like for example, you're praying for your son, right? And you don't even know you're praying for your son. You just sense there's a restlessness, you need to pray. You're praying for your son, right? What you're praying for your son, you don't even know. But you're praying for your son. 
Tomorrow, Wednesday, as he's crossing the road, there is a man who is drunk during daytime. He just had too much drink. He's passing by that moment at the right time, wrong time. And the prayer is saying, God, protect the boy. Hinder him from crossing at that time. Put obstacles along his way and the boy is delayed. The teacher scold him, stay in class. <laughs> he thinks that, you know, oh, all Tiana. <laughs> the, the boy say, all heaven is against me, you know. No, no, all these things working for good for you, boy. But our limited understanding. But the mother is praying. Now imagine the mother doesn't even, even know what she's praying. A lot of deliverances that God gives us, we, have no, we cannot even thank Him for because we don't know. We thank Him for what we know. He's under tank. And we are under tanking. So we come together on Sunday, we give Him all the praise and the worship. Amen. Amen. For who He is and for all that He's done, for all the things that we know and the things that we don't know. Amen? Imagine the mother knows. The mother knows exactly what she's praying for the boy. She knows. Next week, next, son, next Wednesday, I tell you this, the whole week, the boy is not going to school. <laughs> right, mother, mothers? Am I right or not? To play it safe, maybe it's not Wednesday, it's Monday. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? So it's best you don't know some things you pray. Uh, many years ago, our church, before this uh, grace revolution happened in New Creation Church, in the early 90s, I was preaching those years are all those praying in tongues series. You know what happened after a season of praying in tongues? It launched forth the Grace Revolution in 1997. That's why people under grace, when they pray in the Spirit, they understand grace. Because grace, you cannot understand grace. Grace is not logical. Law is logical. Do good, get good. Do bad, get bad. I understand that. I understand that. Everyone in the world understand that. Do good, get good. Even a child understands, don't have to teach your tongue. Do good, you get good. Do bad, what you get? Bad. But you can receive good, you don't deserve. Huh? Amen? We, we, we balk at that. And anyone preaches that, we don't understand, so we assassinate him. His character, I mean. My character has been assassinated, and I don't know why he gets stronger and stronger by the grace of God. Yeah, it seems like, like people throw rocks, right? And then this foundation just raise it higher. More people get to hear about me because of the criticism, you know? So I don't want to say welcome, okay? I just say, let God be God. What do I do? I don't, I don't pay attention to those things. I forgive the people involved. Whenever I hear about someone, I forgive the person. I even take communion for the person or persons. I take communion for them. Yeah, but then you know what? When I get up, I move on. I move on. Amen? Amen? Because I know this calling from God. Amen. You cannot understand grace. You see, tell me you understand this or not. Everyone that Jesus healed, okay? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you can see the healing of Jesus' ministry. Everyone that He healed in the Gospels, he never tell them, he never compelled them to follow him. Yeah, he did tell some fishermen, follow me, but he didn't heal them. I know what you're thinking. He did say, follow me, the fishermen. But everyone that he healed, he never used that as a pretext. Now I heal you, huh? Now you follow me. Jesus never buys hearts. He wins them by the attractiveness of grace. Okay? He never put a price tag on his healing. The man, Nain, he was probably in his 20s. The, the widow was crying. Her only son had died. All right, she's a widow, no husband, no man in life. And back in those days, that culture, if you're a, a, a woman all alone, it's hard to lift, to survive. Jesus stopped the entire procession, 
raise that, that man, young man. Young men, I say unto you, arise. What did Jesus do? Now, follow me. Did he say, no. He gave her back to her mother. Amen. I love him. <laughs> the one I, you know, the more you see Jesus, to be like him, that's our goal. We don't look at the law to be like him. We look at him. And don't worry about people. Don't criticize other people. They, they got to look at Jesus. I mean, grace people so it can be funny. All right? People must look at Jesus. Wow, that's so much. Listen, I didn't point to Jesus. No, it, uh, once upon a time, true story, I think it's in Italy or somewhere. You know, there are a lot of artists painting on the canvas, right? So there was a crowd. So this Christian guy went to see the crowd, right? And, and what was happening. So the crowd was looking at an artist painting Jesus' face. All right? And it's very interesting. The crowd was looking at the artist painting Jesus' face. And then this guy said, ah, terrible. They should be looking at the painting. Amen? Not the artist. He doesn't know who the artist is. And then the Lord spoke to him and says, that's what happened to many of my, many of my people. They're not looking to me. They're looking to the person looking at me. So I'm pointing you to Jesus, but don't look at the preacher. Amen. Like, don't be like a cat, you know, you say, like, or a dog, go there, there, there. Hey, dog, there. All right? Then the dog come in. Sniff your finger. <laughs> Miss the point. <laughs> you, know, you know dogs like that, right? So then, there, they know. Right? So you can actually be critical of, oh, you know, they don't point people to Jesus. Are you looking to Jesus? Forget others. What is that to you? You follow Jesus. And Peter, oh, Pastor, this person is criticizing me. Forget them. You follow Jesus. What is that to you? Each one follow the Lord. Each one has to answer to the Lord. Amen. Don't even look to the preacher. If the preacher has the, the luxury and the privilege of looking at Jesus, you join him. Look at Jesus. Amen. You love your, your kids? You love your kids? How much do you love your kids? A lot? They are just a... Whatever you, is lovable in them is but a little trait of the person of Jesus that has its fullness. Everything comes from Him. So you think about everything that you love, right? To a certain extent, it is not perfect. Even though it's your loved one and my loved one, it's not perfect. Even in me, it's not perfect, right? But it is a reflection of things that you see. Like just now when Pastor Lawrence came up here, I was in my room and I told someone, this guy's pastoral character is so beautiful. That's what I said about you, brother. <laughs> Behind your back. I said, he's so pastor, you know, his pastoral gift. Now, what is that? What is that that I admire in him? Thank God. I mean, it's, it's part of him now, right? But it is actually but a reflection of the shepherding of our Lord Jesus. So everything you love, you, I, I love this uh, sister's meekness. It's so, so beautiful. It's, it shines out. It's not false humility. I see that. The sweetness. What is that? It's the sweetness of Jesus. Yes. Amen. So to see Him is to be like Him. That's how holiness happens in a practical way. Not by your efforts. Can I be good? Amen? Amen. So back to this. I'm going to share with you a secret before you go. All right? And uh, you see with me now. How did Ephesians 6, 18 talk about praying in the Spirit? Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Right? But by the way, go back to Young's first. Show them. Uh, Young says, through all prayer and supplication, praying at all times in the Spirit. So at all times is the word kairos. That means what? Pray at every opportunity you get in the Spirit. Pray. Every opportunity you get. For me, driving is one great opportunity. We have a lot of time there, right? Yeah, you can listen to the radio, but pray in the Spirit. One thing that I believe that God, God crafted this gift, He must have a smile on His face. When he, when he gave this gift to men, because he knows that a lot of people have this idea, I must find time to sit somewhere, be alone. Now, I, I, I recommend that 
highly, to have a time before the Word of God quietly, all right? But if you don't, there is a gift that keeps on giving. As you are cooking, as you are working, as you are typing, as you are driving, you can be praying in the Spirit. And you have the quality of prayer that Elijah had when he was on his knees for three hours. Are you listening? And best of all, it doesn't engage your mind. It's prayer from your spirit. The way God ordained, your spirit control your mind, your mind control your body. Not today. Today, the people of the world is either the body controlling their everything or the mind is controlling. I don't understand, therefore I cannot believe. All right, the mind controlling everything. The mind wants to be boss. So the gift of tongues humbles us. I said the gift of tongues humbles us. It's a gift that came on the day of Pentecost. Paul says, I would that you all speak with tongues. But in the church, he rather not, not everyone just pray in tongues out loud. And that's the only time you pray. Don't try to impress each other with your spirituality. He's saying that. But rather you speak words that people understand. Yes, in the church. Notice the words, these four words. Yet in the church, I rather you speak. But then he says what? Forbid not to speak with tongues. I would that you all speak with tongues. Then Paul says, I pray in tongues more than you all. You know what you all know? He's writing to the Corinthian church that pray in tongues all the time when they are together. And he's saying, all of you combined together, I pray in tongues more than you all. He must have woken up praying in tongues, rode on his camel praying in tongues, went to the toilet praying in tongues, amen, talked to people under, under tones praying in tongues. Don't I pray out loud, just pray softly. And get your children to do it. But let them see you do it first. Pray in tongues in front of them, right? Pray in tongues out loud before you tell them to do it. Pray in tongues out loud. The Lord taught me this because uh, recent, no, not too long ago, uh, Justin, I told Justin, Justin, pray in, pray in tongues. See, I did it before my exam today, I prayed in tongues. That, that, but, but Abba, you don't pray in tongues. So you see, in front of him, I've always like, Shakarababarama, softly. So from then on, whenever he's around, I pray in tongues out loud. <laughs> Do it with your family. Amen. You are releasing the river of life into your family. Amen. I'm going to show you something very interesting. Look at this verse, and uh, we're going to close after that, okay? Okay, I, I shouldn't be saying close because it makes your expectant, expectancy <laughs> go up, and then when I don't write, it comes crashing down, okay? Um, but but uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to save you, what I'm about to say. It's going to rescue you, Amen. and I want to make sure that it gets through. Amen. So help me here, okay? Amen. Now, Notice the word praying at all times in the Spirit. I told you at all times is at all kairos, every opportunity you get. Amen? Now, praying, notice what, what prayer? Prayer and supplication. Keep those two in mind. Prayer and what? Prayer and? But both are done in the Spirit. Now go back to the New King James. And it says that praying always with all prayer and supplication. Notice all prayer and supplication. All right? I'm going to give you the Greek so you, you will hear this word and get familiar with it so you know, if I mention it again, you will see it. Prayer is prosuche. Supplication is deesis. Prosuche, deesis. So you won't think that, oh, it's only the same in English, but not in the original. You will see it. Okay, just, just tuck it somewhere. Prosuche, prayer, supplication, deesis. Keep it, okay? Notice the, the, the twins. And both are done in the Spirit. Both are done what? In the Spirit. Dimensions of prayer. Okay? Are you with me so far? Yes. Now watch this. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Don't be anxious for anything, in other words. You got it? Oh, easy for you to say, Lord. <laughs> you don't have my responsibilities. <laughs> Sorry, no. Wow, Pastor Mark, his wife is perfect. I mean, when Pastor Mark drives his car, he, he, he told us one time, right? I think he told the church also, right? Uh, his car hits the curb. All right? Oh, and then he complained. Then the wife says, it's not your fault, dear. It's the curb's fault <laughs> for being there. And all of us, all the pastors who are married, look at him like… <laughs> he tells us, you know, he's got the best wife. She encourages me, you know. 
Whatever I do, she always encouraged me one. But all of us, our wife encourages us also. But they won't blame the curb. The curb is unbending, unyielding. Pastor, Pastor Mark, he, he, he tells us, really, he tells us his favorite hit song that he likes to sing to uh, his wife is this song. Tell me lies, tell me lies. <laughs> you know, when you're desperate, right? Anything will do. La. Amen? See, he doesn't get it from us, he gets it from at home, la, you know? Come to me, I speak the truth, man. In love, in love, in love. <laughs> Pastor, you were saying? Yeah. So, just keep this in mind. Prayer and supplication. All right? Prayer and supplication. I'll bring this to a close. Now watch this. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by what? Prayer. That is prosuke and deesis. Exactly the same words used where? In uh, Ephesians 6 for praying in tongues. Okay? Praying in the Spirit. So be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Also, the Bible says when someone invites you to dinner or whatever, all right? The Bible says pray in English. It doesn't say English there, but pray in your own known language because the guy you pray in tongues, he says this, for truly you give thanks well. One translation, you truly give thanks excellently. That means we are praying in tongues, it's giving thanks as well. Excellently. But it says, you truly give thanks well, but the other is not edified, it doesn't understand what you're saying. It doesn't know when, when to say amen and start eating. <laughs> so when people ask you to pray over the food, don't go sharp. Amen. The guys, all right? you will see a flying fork. <laughs> Hit past the mark. Pshhh. Then the wife says, darling, it's not your fault. It is the fork. <laughs> okay. So it says, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, we all want the peace of God to guard our hearts and minds. The word God is a very strong military word that's used in the Greek over here. It means a military garrison. Guarding your heart and mind from all fears, worries, anxieties, which cause, these thoughts will cause you to go into a spiral of oppression, depression. Hmm? Pray in the Spirit. Let your requests be made known to God. Now, I know that this verse is used traditionally, it's taught in like whatever you know, anxiety you have, you go to God, okay? Tell God about anxiety. God, I have this anxiety about my interview tomorrow and, and I don't know how it's going to go and uh, or I have this anxiety about this pain in my body, Lord. I come to you and I, and I, I give you that anxiety, Lord. Now, there's nothing wrong with applying that verse and that scripture. Okay, with this, no, no, nothing wrong. Uh, in fact, that prayer I will put in First, uh, first Peter 5, casting all your cares upon Him, for He cares for you. But to be exact, this verse is saying, all right, there's a prayer and supplication. Whenever you're anxious, shukaramamba. watch this, let your requests be made known to God. Now this word, request be made known to God, sounds passive. It's not like you are making every anxious request that you have, request about anxiety, to God. No, it is being made known to God by someone. Now I'm going to show you the Greek right now. The Greek for this one is actually present, passive, imperative. Passive, not active. Present, passive, imperative. That means you are not the one making known. If it's you making known, like your part is this, be anxious for nothing, that is active voice. So what do you do? You pray. Your part is to pray in the Spirit and the Spirit makes known to God. 
is the same phrase used recently, a few uh, messages ago I shared about the armor of God. It starts by saying, finally my, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. The word strong there is present passive imperative. It's not you. I'm trying to be strong. No, 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 no. You be strong in the Lord. It means the Lord empowers you. You are, be, you are being made strong. How? By putting on the armor. The next verse tells you that. It's the same thing. Some messages ago, I, I preached about being filled with the Spirit con- on a constant basis, right? Once you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, hopefully you all are, okay? Don't doubt. Once you're saved, you have the Holy Spirit, okay? But baptized in the Holy Spirit is immersed. The word baptized is immersed in the Holy Spirit. It's like, like I, drink, I drink water, okay? I take water and I drink water, right? The water is in me. Never say someone who's saved don't have the Holy Spirit. They all have the Holy Spirit. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, it's none of his. But if I... After I drink the water, the water in me, I go to the swimming pool, I dive deep down in the swimming pool. Now I'm immersed in the water. Got it? That's the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Okay, got it? Just go to the prayer and healing room. Ask them for that prayer. Okay? Are you with me so far? Now, when you pray in tongues, but, but then every day, how do you maintain it? The Spirit filled, constant filling. In Ephesians, it says, be being filled with the Spirit. Passive. Imperative again. Present, passive, imperative. In other words, you're not actively filling yourself. You are not the player here. You are singing. That's you. You are just singing. It says, speaking to yourself. Next line in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. That's you singing, you know, praise the Lord. I sing praises to your name, O Lord. Blessed be the Lord, God Almighty. I tell you, on your way to work, when you sing like that, even under your breath, whether you're in an MRT or in your vehicle, on your way there, it changes everything. You know why? Because you are being filled with the Spirit. But notice, you are being filled. It's passive. So same thing here. When you are praying in tongues and prayer and supplication we have established, again, the proof is there from Ephesians. Same word, prosuche deisis, prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Although the word in the Spirit is not here, it's the same thing because Bible interpret Bible. When these two things appear together, are you listening? And then not only that, this be made known is not you making known. If If it's you making known, it's active. This one is passive. The Holy Spirit, as you are praying, whenever you have a fear in your heart, just go like this. Okay, practically, I'm going to demonstrate to, uh, and share with you. There are times at night, for example, all of a sudden, have you woken up with, with uh, your heart beating really fast? Like palpitation? <laughs> Don't know why? All right, many of, many of, many of the reasons, uh, um, most of the reasons is stress. Stress in the day. Okay? Of course, you've got heart pain or whatever, you know, you need to go and see a doctor. All right? But I'm telling you, even you've got symptoms in your body, I'm, I'm illustrating from just, we isolate one event at night. Your heart beats real fast. You know what is it? Or pain or whatever. Have you noticed that the devil uses nighttime? That's why it's called the prince of darkness. Amen? Spiritual wickedness. All right? The darkness of this world. Amen? Daytime depression seems lesser. Nighttime depression is very bad. Have you noticed that? You don't want to say anything, huh? (laughs) Next time, ask Pastor Mark's wife to sit over here. (laughs) Right here. Actually, you are saying amen, but these front row people, right? For some reason, this, this... these people here, who want to exchange places with them? <laughs> so you've got five minutes left to uh, redeem yourself, okay? Those in the front row. Or else we're exchanging places. Who is the loud ones over here? Who are, who are the loud ones over here? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I hear you. I see you. Amen? Okay. 
So in the middle of the night, you have this pain or you have a worry or whatever, and your, your, your stomach is like, you know, butterflies in your stomach, okay? You, you, you're fling knots down there. What do you do? Now, some people say, get up, get down, cast your cares to the Lord. Just cast your cares. That's fine. I'm not knocking that. You can use that as, a prime, uh, as, a, as a one of the use of the... Right? But I believe the primary word here written to people, New Testament people who understand about praying in tongues because it's rampant in the early church. They pray in tongues all the time. So they understood Paul when he says by prayer and supplication. So what they do when they are anxious, you just say this to the Lord. Lord, I do not know how to pray for this condition. You know there's a verse in um, Romans 8 verse 26. Likewise, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness for we do not know how to pray as we ought. Come on, come on, come on. Amen. So how many realize that many of us, we don't know how to pray as we ought? It's only Pastor Mark, <laughs> amen, and Pastor Lawrence. But the rest of us humans, <laughs> uh, we don't know how to pray as we ought, right? Am I right or not? So we need the Holy Spirit, amen? But don't forget the Holy Spirit is God Himself. And He's been sent, one of the, His offices today is to be our helper. Amen. The one who comes alongside and helps us. Amen. Now, the Holy Spirit don't make the praying for you. It says, likewise, Romans 8, 26, likewise, the Spirit helpeth. The word helpeth is the word soon in front in the Greek, which means join together, join helper. You must still pray. He'll give you the words. So I, I tell Justin, even funny words come up. Just say it as you're praying in the Spirit. Amen. That's what we need to teach people, Right? Don't let your reason take over. By the way, if you ask God for the Holy Spirit, you cannot get an evil spirit. Amen. Don't worry. In fact, in the context of asking God for the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, who asks, any child asking the Father for bread, will the Father give him a stone? He asks for fish, will the Father give him a scorpion or a serpent? No, right? If you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more the Father will give the Holy Spirit and good things to those who ask Him. So when you ask God to baptize you with the Holy Spirit, amen, God will stop every other spirit and make sure you receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, Jesus guarantees there. Are you with me so far? So watch this, all right? So God, I don't know what's this pain causing, I mean, this, I can't sleep and I'm worried about this and let's say it's a pain, okay, in your body. So what you do. Likewise, the Spirit helpeth our infirmity. By the way, the word infirmity there is also not just mental weakness or emotional weakness. A lot of people interpret that as this. The word infirmity primarily is used in the Bible, in the Gospels. The first time it's used, Jesus Himself took our infirmities. Many people who touched the hem of His garment were healed of their infirmity. Those who came to hear Him and be healed of their infirmities. So it's disease as well. The Spirit helpeth our disease. How about that? together with you against your disease. Amen. Huh? Amen. For we don't know how to pray as we ought. So, Lord, I do not know how to pray about this condition. I've asked you for healing and all that, but maybe I, I need a prayer, Lord, that only the Holy Spirit knows how to pray. So let the Holy Spirit from hands fall. You're lying down in the bed. Let the Holy Spirit from hands fall. Pray about this situation, Lord. Right now. Then go. I don't care how long. A pastor, I need to get up early to go to work. Don't worry. Whenever you pray in the Spirit, something happens for me, even though I have five hours sleep, when I pray in the Spirit, you feel fresh. Something happened, there's an energizing. You ever had a night where you slept little, but there was energy the whole day? It's like you, somehow you tap into a spiritual power that energizes you all the time. And there are times you sleep eight hours and the whole day you are like that. <laughs> huh? You kick the cup. You know, so... <laughs> And your, the wife will still say, you didn't kick the cup. The cup kicked you. you, know? you know? So, pray that way. And I'm telling you, something happens. Something happens when you're praying like that. First of all, peace. Even though the pain is there, peace. Peace. Because God deals with you first. You cannot receive healing when you are apprehensive, anxious. That's why don't be anxious for anything. Right? First of all, when you pray in tongues, it will even push out all the anxiety, stress, and worry. There was a test done in the University of Tulsa, University in Tulsa, or Roberts University. They did a brain test on people praying in tongues, and they found that it boosts their immune system. 
and brings down stress. So I, I think about 25%, if I'm not mistaken, about, which is a lot. So you pray, something happens to you, knowing that someone perfect is praying for you, even psychologically, you feel at peace. Something is being done about it. You know, and more than just psychological, something is really being done about it. And that's why the peace of God will garrison your heart and mind. Amen. Now, sometimes, I don't know how many times I've prayed like this, and the next day, I, before I know it, I'm, I'm, I'm asleep, and I wake up, and the pain is no more. There are some things, more chronic, more long-term, I pray about it, and it gets better as the days go by. Amen? Or I don't think about it. Or for sure, I'm no more anxious about it. Amen. Are you listening, people? Bring them one by one to God. Lord, Holy Spirit, Father, let your Holy Spirit pray about this thing or this thing. Just let it. Amen. Even driving to work, there is a, a challenging meeting that you're about to be part of. Just pray, Lord, Holy Spirit, you know how to pray for me, Lord, and whether it's favor or whatever I need, Lord, you know what's ahead. Pray about this meeting. As you're driving, I'm telling you, the peace of God, you'll walk in you're the only one that's peaceful, calm, and collected. The peace of God got risen your heart and mind. Father, I don't know why my child having this fear. I really don't know. We try our best, talk sense into the child. We try to reason with the child. If something is happening. The child is so afraid of this. Holy Spirit, you know. Pray for this child. And sometimes the problem continues, but there's peace to handle the situation. Sometimes there is an interpretation. You don't even know you're receiving an interpretation. Oh, just click the light turn on. Are you listening? Yeah. And this is only one of the gifts of the Spirit. It tells us, I need to close today, that there's a promise given in Isaiah 28 with stammering lips and another tongue. He will speak to these people. To whom he said, This is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. It's rest and refreshing people, R&R. &R. Right? Yet, they were not here. Notice, with stammering lips, God, Isaiah prophesied. During the Old Testament, they didn't have the gift of tongues. They had the Holy Spirit on them, but never in them. David, Samuel, Elijah himself, Isaiah himself, never had the Holy Spirit inside them. Why? Because the inside is not clean, not born again. You and I, we are clean on the inside by the blood of Jesus. So the Holy Spirit can dwell in us. That shows the gift of tongues is unique for this dispensation. For those under grace. Are you with me? So he prophesied, this is a prophecy, with stammering lips. How many are you glad? Sometimes my tongue doesn't sound like Pastor Lawrence. Okay, because you hear us pray in tongues up here sometimes. I don't, it doesn't sound, don't worry, even stammering lips is the beginning. Amen. It's God's gift of tongues. And God says, He'll speak to these people. God says what? This is the rest, definite article, and the refreshing. Amen. And so sad, yet they would not hear. Even believers today will not hear. No doubt, even this message will be heavily criticized. No doubt. And it just fulfills, it, show, it fulfills God's Word, the truth, the veracity of God's Word. They were not here. But you, blessed are your ears, for they hear. Yeah, blessed yeah. are your eyes, for you see. Yeah, yeah. Now, how do you know Pastor Prince is talking about tongues? Very interesting, good question. I'm glad you asked. And you prolong the whole thing by one minute. Okay? Because in Isaiah 14, when, sorry, in 1 Corinthians 14, when Paul talks about praying in tongues, when Paul talked about praying in tongues, the context there, he actually quoted Isaiah 28. All right? And this is what he says in Isaiah, um, in, in 1 Corinthians 14. He says, In the law it is written, referring to the Old Testament, with men of other tongues and other lips, I will speak to these people. And yet, for all that, they will not hear me, says the Lord. The context. Therefore, tongues are for a sign. Tongues. Can you see the context? Yep. Can you see it? The whole thing? 
And what is it? The full reading in Isaiah? This is the rest. And this is the refreshing. May all of us pray in the Spirit more and more. The end of all things is at hand. Watch unto prayer. A lot of things will move your heart with anxiety, cares, worries. If it's stress, doctors tell us all the time, you know, people are being stressed and that's what leads to a lot of uh, heart conditions and things like that. It's not so much the good stress, you know. You go through a problem, you go through an exercise, whatever, uh, the, you know, adrenaline, cortisol, that's released, you know, uh, sugar and all that is released into your bloodstream for energy to do immediate thing. But then, when the, energy, when the emergency is over, you stop. Right? Everything goes down. A lot of people, they don't stop. Every day, the whole day is an emergency. And it releases sugar into your blood. I believe diabetes is one of the results of chron- chronic stress. All right? It releases cortisol. It releases all those things. And then your, your arter- arteries begin to break down. And then you have calcification and all that of the arteries. The doctors will tell you, not, it's not some figment of my imagination. St- chronic stress is a, is, a, is a daily thing. Even, it, it's been shown even Alzheimer can be caused by chronic stress, inflammation. So people, one of the best God is praying the Spirit whole day. At all, every opportunity you get, every kairos, every opportunity to pray in the Spirit. I'm done. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Stand to your feet. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord. Yes. Amen. I'm so glad. I love you all. You all know that, right? Yes. And, I, and the reason I prepared this message is because I really want you to receive this so that no one will start, you know, sp- speaking disparagingly of the gift of tongues. Amen. 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 It's been the, really the making of my ministry, just like John G. Lake says, right? Pray in tongues. Pray in tongues a lot. Your child is sick. Pray in tongues. After you have prayed, the communion and all that, pray in the Spirit. Sit down somewhere, pray in the Spirit. The peace will come because you know that the greatest, like you go to a great man of God to pray, right? You go to Pastor Lawrence or Pastor, Pastor Mark to pray, you feel like something's being done because this person, God answers his prayer. You, you, you think that way. God answers everyone's prayer. But you think that way. How much more? A perfect one, the Holy Spirit, praying for you. It does something when you're praying in the Spirit, you know something is being done. Something is being done. If not outwardly first, inwardly. Because you think you want to get rid of the problem. God thinks your insight must change. So He deals with your insight. You cannot be anxious and receive. So He deals with that. Amen? Friend, if you have never put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, I'd like to give you this opportunity right now. Very simple. Like what Paul said in the synagogue, He says, through this man Jesus is preached to you the forgiveness of sins. Nothing to do on your part. Just believe on Him, believe what He did on the cross and receive that gift of salvation. Completely, completely free for the taking. Amen. If that is you, you want to pray this prayer with me where I lead you to receive this gift, you may do so. Say, Heavenly Father, I receive and believe on my Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for my sins and He was raised from the dead when I was acquitted in Him. I am now one with Him. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Saviour. And Father God, baptize and fill me with Your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' Name, Amen. Now, the time I would otherwise bless you, just give me a one minute together, pray in the Spirit, all right? Those who never pray in the Spirit right now, receive the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. You have asked for it right now. In the name of Jesus, receive the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Now, you might hear words coming out, words that you cannot understand. Speak it out, speak it out. They spoke with tongues. The Spirit gave them utterance. They spoke. Speak it out. Amen. Speak it out. Sharaba shukara baharaba. Mran tokro basum pramamba. Mentiara bakara baharaba haya. 
All right, now switch to praying in tongues. Uh, sorry, singing in tongues. Sirian Tarama Surabakaya, Hirian Tirian Tokoro Bababara, He Hiria Maharaba Sukaraba, Hirian Tarabo Tiriarama. You can do, do this whole day, okay? Sirian Tarabakaya. All right, do it under tones now. Surian Tarama Shabra, Sheria Mashara. Okay, and pray. You see, you are in control. And that's what the neuroscientists found out also. It's not like something take you over. That's an evil spirit. This one, you can control the volume. You can pray softly when you are in front of people. Amen. And the Holy Spirit gives you the words. That's the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless all of you. Amen. You are dismissed. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. But don't go just yet. If you'd like to receive prayer, share your testimony, or find out more about Gospel Partner, just click the link on this screen. If not, I'll see you in the next episode.